From FingerLakes1.com, I'm Josh Durso, and this is Inside the FLX. Our program today began several weeks ago when Assemblyman Robert Oaks announced that he would not seek another term representing the 130th Assembly District. Shortly thereafter, Lyons Town Supervisor Brian Mankelow, a Republican, announced his candidacy to represent the district. He's a veteran, farmer, businessman, longtime community advocate, and our guest this hour on the show. Uh, he says he's running to restore faith lost in the American dream and advocating for a world that rewards those who work hard and play by the rules. Uh, Brian, Supervisor, thank you so much for being back. Uh, been a long time since you've been on the program. Well, thank you for having me this morning. So uh, give us the rundown. Why? What made you choose to run uh, for uh, Assembly District 130 uh, this year? Why is now the right time? Now's the right time because, you know, Bob has decided to retire, and he's done a great job, and we want to continue with that tradition down in Albany, having good representation from upstate. And knowing what I know through the town and county levels and, and what happens in Albany affects us locally, um, now's the time. And there's no better, no better thing to do than to serve other people and, and help them through their, their life issues and issues they have with the state. So that's why I am decided to run. So work hard and play by the rules. Uh, I love that. I love that slogan. Uh, talk to us about it and, and why that's what you're choosing, one of the things that you're choosing to really hone in on. Well, working hard. You know, we have a lot of hardworking people up here in upstate New York, and these people deserve to have good representation down in Albany. But, but that being said, also, you know, we're overregulated, overtaxed, and going down there and fighting for these people so people can, can enjoy their lives and, and play hard and, uh, and have fun, but also make a, a good living and, and be successful. So what are, if you were going to sort of cherry pick, say, the top two or three issues in the district that you think are really burdening uh, not just taxpayers, but the people who are trying to do business, run small businesses, uh, what do you think the top two or three issues are right now that the state could address? I think probably a couple of the, the first two issues would be um, we're overregulated. Talking to businesses, small businesses, um, just having things done in Albany and all, all of a sudden it's pushed on us. I think those are one of the top things we need to take a look at. Upstate and downstate are so different, and what works downstate doesn't necessarily work upstate. And one of the, the key things that was passed there a year or so ago was the minimum wage. The minimum wage, it, it might be okay in the New York City area where the, the revenues are different, the money's different. Um, but here in upstate New York, and especially our, our small mom and pop uh, businesses, they're struggling and it's hard. Those, those are some of the key things that we need to change to allow these people to grow. And, and you know, anytime we can get government out of somebody's private business or, or their life, it, it's a better thing. Now, I want to read back to you something that's uh, posted on your Facebook page that I, I thought was really, really interesting. Uh, obviously, this is a part of your statement. Taxes are too high, our standard of living is too low, and jobs are moving away. Albany reacts by telling us to dissolve our local governments, consolidate our schools, and offer fewer services to our citizens. They treat the symptoms instead of addressing the real issues. Uh, that is, that there is a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, but... Where would Albany begin addressing that? Obviously, we're going to talk more in a little while about the whole dissolution discussion, obviously, okay. because that hits close to home for you. Um, but in general, uh, where does it begin? Obviously, regulation, but where or where does the nuance begin, I guess? Well, well I think with Albany and, you know, right now they have a regional approach on economic development for the region, mm -hmm. and which is a good thing. But at the same time, you know, we send our tax dollars down to Albany and they come up with all these ideas on how to get it back to us. You know, as a municipality, we can go after this grant, or we're going to do this for this business. And the governors, uh, you know, we're open for business in New York State. And it's just a hard thing. It, we're not open for business. People don't want to stay here. People don't want to open businesses. And we need to change that. And with the approach that they're using for the regional um, economic development, we need to do that here as well. Let's leave our money here in our area instead of sending it down to Albany. And then, oh, by the way, we'll give you guys a little bit back and you can do with, with it what you want. That, that needs to change. It sounds like you're saying Albany is the middleman and you want to take the middleman out of the equation. Absolutely. Anytime there's a middleman, everybody suffers. So, okay, so dissolution. Yes. Um, obviously, Lyons went through it, uh, one of the two most recent communities who has mm -hmm. gone through it here in the Finger Lakes. Um, did it work as intended, I guess, would be the most obvious question. It worked very well. Mm -hmm. um, our community has is, is, is really come together. And, you know, within the former village, the taxpayers, their taxes went down about 60%. 
it worked very well, but at the same time, it shouldn't have been pushed by the state. It, you know, the state needs to look at what they're doing. It, it worked well, and it, it did what it was intended to do, but I don't like um, big government telling little government what, what should and shouldn't work. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, this ties pretty pretty well into the Shared Services Initiative. Mm-hmm. Um, when you talk to local officials, talk to we've talked to a lot of them out of Yates County, Seneca County, Ontario County. They all say the same thing. We've been doing this. This mm-hmm. is this is nothing new. Uh, do you share that sentiment uh, as far as you know the shared services aspect of it goes? Yes, absolutely. We're we we have been doing it. I've been doing it since I've been involved with the with the town. Um, but we've we, we're all doing it. Our highway departments are doing it. Our county highway departments. Our our sh- county sheriffs. We're all doing the work together and sharing with one another. But until New York State, until Albany says, "Hey, wait a second, we have got to stop what we're doing." And nothing's really going to change because we're all doing it. We have to do it. Um, you know, we're the grassroots uh, of the politics. We're down at the low level, and we see everybody every single day. So in good faith and doing a good job in our communities, we're going to try to save money. How, I guess the, the question that tends to come up the most, it seems, is how, how much more sharing can really happen? Um, how many more years of shared services can be brought in as new shared services before you finally just reach the the point where we don't have anything left to share uh, albany what are you going to do well i i think you're you're exactly right right now we're at you know the things that we can do shared services is, is very minute right now you know we had a task force through the county through the, the the county the town supervisors as well as the mayors and the schools there's not a whole lot more to do um to me it's a good pitch for somebody that wants to run for president Mm-hmm. And he's just saying, look, it, let's do this. This is what I'm doing for the state. No, we're already doing that. We know how to do it. Maybe the state should listen to, to us. What, what do you say, uh, obviously, looking from the outside right now, the gridlock that, that is Albany? Um, lots of bills every year, hundreds, maybe thousands go untouched, un, unlooked. Um, what does that say about our, our governing process in Albany and what's wrong with it? I think part of the problem down there is, is there's so many new things coming all the time. Everybody thinks that you have to create a bill to do something down there. You know, we can do other things. Maybe we need to get rid of some of the bills that aren't really being used or are outdated. That That's an approach we need to take a look at. And also with term limits, not having term limits down there, we have the same people down there year after year after year, and they get complacent, and we don't accomplish a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, term limits are is that something that you'd be in favor of yes, at the legislative I've, level? Uh, what what if you were aiming sort of roughly? What do you think a, a, a good term limit structure would be? I think downstate, you know, in Albany, eight to ten years would be a, a good limit. Um, mm-hmm. First two years is pretty rough. You're just learning the process and, right. and learning what you can do, but not just <laughs> at the elected officials. You know, you got committee members down there. You have other positions. We need to take a look at it across the board, not just elected officials. Now, this has been one of my my personal curiosities. Is is two years even really enough? Because it seems like the it, in st- one of the methods that could be brought out here is that instead of two year terms, you go to three year terms, so that people the people who are serving can actually get get a grasp of what they're doing before they have to cycle back into that process of running again. Yes. I agree with that. As a supervisor, when I first became supervisor, I was a two-year term. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, you're always campaigning. You're always out there campaigning. But when it became a four-year term in Lyons, it, it was nice because it allowed me to get down and get my hands dirty and, and really work on some things without having to worry about running all the time. Mm-hmm. Same situation in Albany. I understand the two-year terms. If you have a bad person down there, that's a good thing. But at the same time, you can't do a whole lot in two years. Right. So what are some of the things that you've been hearing uh, from the folks as you go door to door, as you start talking to people, collecting signatures, that sort of thing? Uh, What are the stories you're hearing? What are the things that are sticking out to you that are making you say, "Ah, we really should be focusing on this or really should be focusing on that? Um, I I think back to the talking with businesses back to the minimum wage, Mm -hmm. but talking to parents and and our school age kids, I I hear that more and more all the time. Lots of times our schools are, are evaluated on how many kids go to college. Well, I'll tell you what, we have a lot of bright kids, and some of the kids don't want to go to college. So we need to look at that. You know, there's a lot of businesses out there and a lot of things that kids can do without going to college. And those kids need to be represented and um, applauded for for wanting to do that. You know, we, we have a, a shortage of plumbers. We have a shortage of electricians, welders. 
those are good jobs, good paying jobs, and we need to help the schools. We need to help our children move forward in that. Now, obviously, with the backdrop being the Excelsior Scholarship, Mm -hmm. um, do you think enough is being done for those trade programs that lead to those types of jobs that you're talking about? Because it seems like that's the area that isn't quite focused on as much as it should be, and that could really help the upstate rural economy, right? Yes, I just I just heard a few weeks ago from uh, Congressman uh, Catco mm-hmm. about a PTEC program, so I looked into that. Mm-hmm. That that's a good thing moving forward because it allows our students to move forward, and we need to, as I said earlier, we need to do that to allow them to to prosper. And um, looking at that and coming up with some different ways would be good. So I, I want to talk a little bit about your your background in in the farming world. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's really interesting because we're seeing a lot more in the news now. Um, and this is national. It's not just necessarily local. Um, the the struggle of the the small farm, the family farms. Um, what are you seeing and hearing from those folks uh, in this in the district uh, in terms of what they're looking for out of leadership, out of Albany, out of the state? Well, that's that's probably two or threefold. Um, if you look at the fruit guys, they're up along the lake and along in this district, up northern part of Oswego, Cayuga, and Wayne counties. You know, their big issues is getting good workers to come in and, and making that a, a possible way and making it easier. So for them, that's that's their big issue. Looking at our dairy farmers, we have the small dairy farmers as well as bigger ones. Um, milk prices are terrible, and these people are absolutely struggling out there. And they're overregulated and overtaxed as well as, we, as everything else. Those are some of the things that we need to change, not just through the state, but also at the federal level. You know, having a good working relationship with our senators and Congress down at the federal, federal side, that that's a positive too in, in knowing them. So there's many different aspects to look at that. But uh, to start a young farm today from the grassroots on up, it, it's hard. It's really hard. And we need to do something to make that easier. I, I- I just I think I want to stress to people it isn't necessarily just buying some property and planning some planning some things or buying some you know cattle or whatever the animal it, there it is a process there's regulation involved right it, yes. it is it is very very difficult uh, to manage that type of agricultural business right mm-hmm. yes and and I can speak from experience on working with the DEC they're there to protect our environment and mm-hmm. and that's a good thing but at the same time. Um, when they come into a farm and there's a small issue, let's not find the farm. Let's help them work through the through the problem right. so they can prosper and move forward. You know, they're there. We're paying them already anyways. Um, why should we find a, find a farmer? So one of the obviously notable features here is that uh, this is not your first go around uh, in this level politics. That's obviously, correct. you were involved in the race for the 54th district when uh, Senate district when uh, Senator Pam Helming ultimately won, succeeded uh, Senator Michael Nazolio. Uh, your thoughts on just what that experience uh, provided you in being able to enter this race, uh, maybe with a little more confidence, maybe with a little more situational awareness? Yeah, absolutely. As soon as Bob announced that he wasn't going to run, um, my campaign major, manager and I were, were up and running already. We knew what to do. We knew the context. And, and the other good thing, running for that 54th district back then, it allowed me to have a good exposure to the whole area. And even though I may not be in the Seneca County area this time, we're still a, a partner. We're still a neighbor. And knowing what the people, knowing what's important to the people in Seneca County and uh, Ontario County and the other counties that, are, that um, come up against the 130th, we gained a lot of knowledge and understanding, and I know those people. I know their concerns, and I can sit across a, a table at dinner and talk to them and say, I understand that. Mm-hmm. Now, working together across county borders seems to be something that is happening more now than in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, your assessment of where that stands as as a county legislator? I think we're being forced into that because, as we talked earlier, shared services, even <coughs> though it may not be a shared service between two highway departments, but it's a shared service between county officials mm-hmm. because we're, we're struggling up here. We, we have a tough battle, and if we can work together as county um, legislators, county supervisors, we can do a whole lot more. And if we band together and work together, we can accomplish a whole lot more. Now, if you uh, obviously... A lot to a lot of time between now and uh, the fall election, but uh, what would be some of the things that you would miss most about uh, representing the town of Lyons and Wayne County in the way that you have previously compared to the way you will or would moving forward? 
Um, I think that I think I'd miss the personal interaction. You know, walking down the streets in Lyons, whether it's a county issue or a town issue, knowing the people on the streets. Not that I wouldn't know them, but um, that one-on-one -on -one exposure. That one-on-one. -on -one, hey, Brian, we got an issue here, and and I enjoy saying, okay, we're going to take care of it. Let's see what we can do. Um, I'll miss that part, but at the same time, I know knowing what I know at the county and town level. We need good representation in Albany to, to move forward. And if we can ease that up for our local officials, anything that we can do will, will be a big help. Now, what would you sort of, if you're going through the, the, your time as supervisor, uh, some of your proudest achievements that you think really lend well uh, to, to the job you're now running for? Well, I think one of the big things um, in Wayne County, we just got approved for a state land bank, and we've been going after derelict properties. <coughs> and... And I know the governor talks about um, derelict properties and stuff like that through the banks. We need to continue that process. We need to um, help the counties not, because the county is going to be in the chain of, chain of title of those properties. We need to take some of that burden off the counties and, and make it a little bit easier for them. So that part right there really makes a lot of difference in understanding that. How... Uh, I and if you tell you, you go county to county and you talk to you talk to actual residents and people who live there, taxpayers, that seems to be one of the big things that uh, a lot of people want to see focus on: the zombie properties, the, the blight, mm -hmm. the, that sort of thing that impacts property values, it impacts tax base, everything like that. Um, do you think enough attention or enough energy is being spent on that right now, or do you see it going the right direction at the very least? I think we're moving forward in the right direction, but now having the understanding and experience being at home and understanding it face to face, we still need to continue to move forward because there's properties out there that, it, that has a mortgage and they'll sit eight, 10 years before a bank will move on them. And, and it's, it's hurting our upstate economy and our, and our area. So for those who might be listening, some one of the concerns that uh, we had heard uh, in the lead up to this was, well... Supervisor Mangelo is a traditional politician. This is where it seems to be we're in this world of everybody's looking for that outsider to come in. Uh, what makes you unique? What makes you different? What makes you the, the candidate that can do this job and will do a great job in this role? It's pretty easy. I'm not in it for personal gain. I'm not in there to be there 20 or 30 years. I'm in there, like I said earlier, 8 to 10 years would be a good number in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm there to help the people of this district in this upstate area. That's all. That's the only thing I want to do. And that's what I've done back at the town and county. It's all about the people. We work for the people. It's not the other way around. And I think as you get elected and you get into different positions, people forget that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. If you need me, I'm there for you. And that's the same drive that I'll take to Albany that I'm using uh, in the town and county as well. What do you, what do you make of the, the, the tone of politics and how it's sort of evolved in the last 8 to 10 to 12 years? Um, it does seem like there's been a real... Uh, seismic shift in terms of what people expect out of politicians now versus what was expected out of them uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago? Well, I think as, as times change, society changes, I think we need to be able to change as well. And, and we see that every single day. Um, my job as a town official, as a supervisor, is much different now than it was seven or eight years ago because things change. And we need to be able to adapt and change along with those changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I, I want you to put the, the, really put the town supervisor hat on, and I'm okay. genuinely curious. In a small community like Lyons, mm -hmm. or any rural community, how difficult is it to get people involved and engaged in politics? whether that's running for, for a local office or whether that's just getting out to vote. Uh, it seems like officials say frequently we need more engagement, but it, it seems like it's really difficult to get people to make that commitment. Do you see that, or do you see it going in a, in a good, better direction now? No, I agree with you. It, people don't want to get involved, I think, because politicians have a, a bad name mm -hmm. because there's so much corruption in certain areas. I'm not saying that at the local level, but... As we talk about Albany, look at some of the corrupt things that have happened down there. And we need good caliber people. And and people are busy. You know, society's busy. We're moving. I mean, you, when I was a kid, my mom was home. You don't have that nowadays. And people don't have all that time. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of the reason. Now, as far as some of the, some of the things we've seen, obviously, a lot of controversy around uh, terrible allegations against Eric Snyderman, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but now the AG's office seems to be resettled. Uh, mm -hmm. Underwood seems to be in a good place uh, to carry the torch for the next 
uh, until the term ends, your thoughts on the process that played out already and uh, what your hope is for that office as somebody who may have to work with the AG's office uh, pretty frequently. Well, I applaud the Assembly and the Senate for the way they they moved it forward. Um, they didn't have a whole lot of choice. Um, I think they're moving forward in a proper way. Um, working with that office down the road, that'll be a new experience for me, and I'll be right there and, and talking with them and learning that, just as I've done as a supervisor. Um, so I'm willing and, and looking forward to doing that down there and understanding more about that. So my last question for you before we get you out of here, uh, what do uh, why should voters consider you as, as their candidate uh, for this office? Because, as I said just a little while ago, upstate matters. Our area matters, and we need to put good people down in Albany, good, honest, hardworking people, people that really care. And I'm that type of an individual. I truly care about everybody that's in this district, just like in my community. I don't care what, who you are or what you're doing or what your job is or your background. My job is to represent you and represent you equally, and I'll take that same dedication and drive down to Albany that I've did locally here um, in the town and county, and also as a as a veteran of the uh, U.S. Army, that same drive there. We're here to protect our country. I've got that same background. I've always had that, and uh, I'll do the same in Albany. Now, is there concern at this point that that upstate could be forgotten, especially with the, the Cynthia Nixon candidacy, because you bring that up, and I, I, it really just reminded me that uh, the Democratic Party seems to be moving in one direction, the Republican Party seems to be mm-hmm. moving in another direction. Uh, is there the risk that upstate or the Finger Lakes or any part of our region could uh, in some way, shape, or form be uh, less thought of or forgotten if, depending on how the governor's race actually pans out this year? And I, I, I will say no, because that's why I'm running for office, as well as some of our representatives now. You know, Assembly, Assemblyman Oaks, uh, Senator Helming, they've carried that torch down there, and we need to continue that torch, and that's probably the main reason I'm running. I do not want us to be forgotten in upstate, because whether you're upstate or downstate, we're all New Yorkers. We all deserve the same, whether it's our children, our seniors, or just in general our businesses or, or anything like that. We need to be counted the same as downstate, and that's why I'm heading down there. All right. Well, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time today to, to talk to us. I'm sure we'll be having you back over the summer to talk more about the issues. And as we roll through this whole process, I uh, really appreciate the time. Thanks for coming in. Well, thank you so much as well. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's going to do it for us today. I'd like to thank Supervisor Mangelo, our listeners, and of course, FingerLakes1.com for making this podcast possible. You can catch Inside the FLX on Saturdays during the 10 o'clock hour on WDWN 89.1 FM in Auburn or 97.7 FM in Fulton. The program also airs Sundays and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on Spectrum, channel 1304, and is available on iTunes, Stitcher, and the FingerLakes1.com app. Stay informed, Finger Lakes, and we'll catch you next time. (laughs) 